Welcome to my mini lecture series on clinical anatomy and today's topic is Amnological Basis of Cervical Cyst, Sinus and Fistula. So let us first see the development of pharyngeal arches. This is the first pharyngeal arch, second, third, fourth and the sixth, the fifth has got obliterated, these are on the other side, first, second, third, sixth, this is the pharyngeal cavity, this is the pharyng these are the pharyngeal clefts. First pharyngeal, second, third, and the fourth pharyngeal cleft. These are the pouches. First, second, third, and the fourth pharyngeal pouches. And this is the epicardial bulge or the epicardial ridge. Normally, the first pharyngeal cleft will form the external auditory canal. Form external auditory canal. Okay, and with the help of the first pharyngeal pouch which forms the epi tympanic reaches it will completely form the medial ear and the external ear along with the auditory tube okay the second pharyngeal arch overgrows the second third and the fourth pharyngeal cleft it goes downwards and join with the epicardial ridge to form a closed cavity which is formed by the second pharyngeal cleft, third and the fourth pharyngeal cleft. So this cavity is known as cervical sinus. Okay. This cervical sinus is temporary and it gets obliterated after some few time. Okay. <clears throat> if this sinus persists in the adults, it is known as cervical cyst or lateral cervical cyst because in adult it will be present with a swelling which is present along the anterior border of the sternoclinomastoid which is present laterally in the neck so if this is the neck this is the cavical this is the sternoclinomastoid so the swelling will lie along the anterior border of the sternoclinomastoid it can be present in the upper part or it can be present in the middle part it can be present in the lower part of the sternoclinomastoid There could be a condition when the second pharyngeal arch doesn't grow downwards and fuses with the epicardial ridge. In that condition, there would be a fistula, which is known as brinkel fistula. This fistula will drain the cyst that is formed by the second, third, and the fourth pharyngeal cleft. And this is the fistula. This is the fistulous opening of this cyst known as external brinkel fistula it's known as external brinkel fistula when the this later cervical cyst has an external opening this external opening lies along the anterior border of the sternoclinomastoid there could be another condition when this later cervical cyst opens into the pharyngeal cavity through this pharyng second pharyngeal pouch. That could be due to the degeneration of cells that is connecting the second pharyngeal cleft with the second pharyngeal pouch. So, in that condition, there would be a fistula strength which will communicate this cervical cyst with the pharyngeal cavity. That condition is known as internal 
branchial fistula. This internal branchial fistula opening in the pharyngeal cavity lies at the level of second pharyngeal pouch and we all know that the second pharyngeal arch forms the tonsillar fossa. So we, where we will find the opening of the internal branchial fistula we will find at the level of the tonsillar fossa. One more important thing that you can remember also that if this fistula is present it passes through the two important arteries that is the ex internal cavity artery and the external cavity artery. So fistula will pass through these two arteries. Okay. So in this diagram, if this is the fistula, it will pass through external cavity and the internal cavity artery. It will pass between them. So this completes the embryological basis of lateral cervical cyst, the branchial fistulas both external as well as the internal branchial fistula. Thank you.